gay feelings. <laughs>and welcome to life is strange all wounds chapter two it's, i know it's been a while since the, the first chapter came out and um destiny smasher who is the creator of this fan game uh finally released chapter two so i'm gonna play and i'm really excited about this because you know i love life is strange anything life is strange that is just me um so if you have not played life is strange or watched my let's play i will put a link uh in the description where you can get the game and, or watch my let's play or you can just click on the screen right now um, I highly recommend that you play the game or watch, like, the gameplay first before you watch this video or so you won't understand what the hell's going on. Also, uh, if you haven't watched chapter one of, uh, this story, I will leave a link in the description for the, for the, um, fanfiction. And if you want to get the game yourself, there's a link in the description as well. Please support, um, the creators of this game. Uh, all their links are there if you want to check out their st stuff. Also, uh, Koeth, who pl does the music in the background, who's playing right now, if you want to check out his channel, I'll put it all there, so all the good stuff is there. But yes, this is, um, anyone unaware, this is, um, highly price field ship. So it's Max and Chloe, alright? Sorry to anybody else who ships Max with everybody else, but you know. Max is feeling really guilty after, um, she made the decision to save Chloe instead of Arcadia Bay. Which is, um, which is understandable, and during the first, uh, chapter, she's fighting with herself, her conscience, so she's having a really hard time dealing with everything, and Chloe's kind of, like, not oblivious, but she's, she's, like, really, like, worried about Max, because she knows something's going on, but Max won't tell her, like, what's up. Let's start! Let me try chapter two, Max. Uh, well, the rabbit hole does go deeper, I guess, but... Ain't really dug much further than this. Have fun pissing around in Chloe's brain then. Ooh, here we go, chapter two! Fritter. This is from Chloe's perspective, so I'm really excited about this because I love Chloe a lot. The cold has passed. Things were warmer that evening. All menacing, monstrous of the wind and chaos. Delicious but horrible chaos. Rampage before her. Distant enough that she felt out of harm's way, yet close enough to still be pretty goddamn terrifying. Oh my god, I know the singer in the background too! What the feels? I can't. <laughs> the raindrops were like needles against her skin, the wind snapping and biting, clawing at her. Everything had been clawing, grabbing, swiping. Days and days of this, like the universe itself is trying to sh shred from existence. The icy fingertips of death brushing against her neck time and again. Time and again and again. But she was still standing. Watching the tornado slowly pass by, it was like staring death face to face. And Chloe had been ready for it, at peace with it, beside the lighthouse. It had taken the past week with Max back in her life to make her feel that way, make her realize how fucked up her priorities had gotten. Make her realize how much she really didn't deserve to be al still be alive. And yet, she was still standing. And death was drifting by, taking Arcadia Bay away, like a child throwing a temper tantrum when it was denied its candy. A fucking big-ass, godlike child. Well, maybe it was more like watching death drive by, a renegade speeding through a red light, flipping Chloe the bird as it passed. She could hear the fucker shrieking, YOLO BITCH, YOLO HO HO HO, as it sped past, er, sped being metaphorical. Watching that tornado roll on by at once was hell-raising, but not exactly quick. Anyway, either way, Chloe Price was still standing, against all odds, against all logic. She felt war so warm, warmer than she could remember feeling in a long time, overwhelmed with too many different emotions to keep track of. And the person responsible for all of this, all of it, was clinging to her for dear life. Max's tears and snot were mixing in the rain, sticking to Chloe's shirt. Max's fingers were tightening, gripping at her leather jacket. Max's breaths were erratic, her sobs heavy, tugging at Chloe's insides. Chloe had tempered in the heat of the moment to lighten the mood, make some kind of crack about a whirlwind of emotions, am I right? <laughs> oh, Chloe. But, uh, yeah, no, not so much. Poor Max probably wouldn't have been able to handle that. Oh, Maxine. Maxie. Max. Maxine fucking Caulfield. That crazy, beautiful mistake of nature. 
saving Chloe's life. What kind of crazy shit had Max been through this week? Chloe had to only imagined, and nothing she imagined was particularly pleasant. Goddamn nightmare, she figured. She's never seen Max so broken apart before, torn up. All of Chloe's- all for Chloe's sake, at that. Girl must have been through some dark shit. And thanks to Super Max putting up with the dark shit, there Chloe was, letting Max's warm fill her, watching her hometown rendered to rubble. And Chloe had never felt more alive. Max's raw emotions were dizzy out of a mess of teardrops and raindrops and snot drops. Words she had said in a minute or two prior repeated themselves in Chloe's head, cutting through all the noise. Don't say that. I won't trade you. Fuck that. No. No way. You're my number one priority right now. You're all that matters. Oh god, I remember this. I was crying during this. Oh my god, the final episode of Life is Strange. I was crying. God. Max could screw around with time and fucking space. And she'd done it for Chloe. She was willing to let this crazy storm tear her entire town apart just to be with Chloe. What the fuck do you say to that? How do you respond? How are you supposed to even feel? Okay. I need to say something about this because I know... Um, if you watch my playthrough, spoiler alert, I didn't pick save Chloe ending. I picked sacrifice Chloe ending. So she's she's actually dead in my playthrough. And that, that's how I believe, that's my headcanon of uh, this story. Because I, I think this is the right thing to do. As much as I ship Pricefield, everybody knows I ship Pricefield. And I love Chloe to death. She She's a very important character to me. But I just felt like it was the right thing to do. Um, but... If you pick the other ending that you sacrifice a Katie Bay, they ride off into the sunset and everybody's like, they get married and whatever. But you have to think about it, like, Chloe has only reunited with Max for, like, a week. Not even, like, five days. So they haven't really, like, gone to the relationship level. Yeah, they kissed and whatever. And, um, it's clear that they're going to end up in, the, in a relationship together. But it, you have to think of it from Chloe's perspe perspective because... This girl just saved your life, and she sacrificed a hole in fucking town for you. So it's just like, Chloe feels kind of obligated to stay with Max, you know what I mean? Even if Chloe wasn't in love with Max or anything like that, she has an obligation to stay with her. Whether it's like, a best friend or a lover, it doesn't matter. Just because Max did all this shit for her, you know what I mean? So, I'm not saying it's like, a guilt trippy as in intentionally, you know what I mean? Like, Max is not intentionally guilt tripping Chloe to stay with her. I just feel like... That's how Chloe sees it, you know what I mean? So, Chloe had no friggin' idea. What she did know was that somehow she'd been given a second chance at living. Max Caulfield actually cared. That much. So fucking much she was willing to make such a crazy choice like that. Mind-blowing shit right here. With Chloe hung across her in the storm, Chloe's eyes pulled with tears. Her heart raced. Her hands shook as she tried to comfort her heartbroken friend. Her best friend her partner in time. The weight of the realization of being loved to such a degree was incomprehensible in the moment. No one was supposed to do shit like that for Chloe Price. How was she supposed to go on hating the world, huh? And after she could wrap her head around someone caring that much? How could Chloe possibly make up such a loss? She was not worth it. There's no way- there were no two ways about it. Especially now, after being with Max for the past week. It was extremely clear to Chloe how selfish she had been, what kind of person she had been turning into, but Max had given her a fresh start, a second shot, and yet she could, she didn't know, become a fucking saint? Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> and no way could it make up for what, being, what was being lost, right then, right in front of their eyes. What the hell was Chloe gonna do? What other choice did she have, other than making the most of the second chance? No, she had to do more than that. She had to make at least make sure at least Max was able to live in the kind of life she deserved. Second chance for both of them. It wouldn't be enough to tip the balance of fucking fate, the universe, whatever. But hopefully it would be enough to keep them both afloat. Chloe, Max, the barista calling out their names in a quick succession like that. It was kind of jarring, in a cool way. Max and Chloe. Chloe and Max. Hmm, which order sounded better? Chloe could see herself getting used to the sound of it either, but they really needed, like, a team name. Pricefield, guys. That's their team name. <laughs> Not one from the when they were kids. They needed a new team name. One for this post-traumatic world they were now living in. Well, if it isn't the Wonder Twins. 
Frank had been sarcastic, but Chloe kind of like it. Ugh, but that was dumb, huh? Damn, had Frank and his dumb mind made out of that shit storm? I hope so. Because there was an- I'm gonna put it on the screen. There was an image, like, if you pick the Sacrifice Arcadia Bay ending. Like, there's a bunch of dead bodies, and people think Frank is one of them, and I, I was so sad because I actually like Frank. Even though he's kind of a dick, I kind of liked him, so. Chloe's brain briefly boiled with embarrassment of the thoughts and feelings. She couldn't believe that Rachel had straight up lied to her about that guy. And come on. Him? She could... Max? Chloe? The barista was looking right at them in front of the spot they had been behind the counter with some impatience. Max, still a bit shaken, twitched a little as if to get up, but Chloe gestured to stay at her seated. Nah, I got this. Chloe got off from her seat, noting the barista was still gawking around with confusion. Signal barista. Just, just a sec. I don't want to be like, yo, come over here, you know what I mean? Hang on. Just a sec. Got it, just a sec. The barista gave Chloe some kind of look before nodding and heading back to something else. Like a stink eye look, for sure. Chloe glanced back to see a still stunned Max in her chair. She paused, noticing that Max had unzipped the leather jacket she was borrowing. Blood stains were littered all over Max's shirt. They didn't- they, uh, didn't need that sort of attention. Yo. St Sidestepping around the table, Chloe tipped her chin up and pinched her fingers near the her chest. As if a such vague on the down low motion would make any sense. Chloe's eyes squinted as she tried to figure out what she was even going to try to whisper in the first place. Max was doe wide and slack jawed, still shaking up. Ugh. Uh, zip up Max's jacket. No, 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 no. Pig Latin! <laughs> oh my god, no, we're gonna zip up um, Max's jacket because she's so out of it still. Chloe took a matters into her own hand, literally, and zipped up the coat for, for Max. She whispered into Max's ear with a British accent. You've got red on your. <laughs> that was a t <laughs> you guys love my British accent. I'm so sorry if you're from from the UK. Oh my god. <laughs> With that taken care of, Chloe finally approached her counter. On their way there, she finally took note of the music playing through the sound system. It was like really friggin' familiar. Chloe knew it from somewhere. Something about the song was leaving a weird pit in her stomach. Shaking of the feeling, Chloe reached the tray of the brunch. Of a bunch. What? Two tall cups of some fancy sounding shit Max had picked out. One with soy, ugh. The other with a hella raspberry creamer. Of course, Max. I, I, I kind of picture that. Max doing that kind of stuff. A bagel and egg sandwich for Max. Some turkey club deal for Chloe. And a bag of donuts. Chloe gawked at the two names written on the cups. Still kind of bedazzled at the reality laid before her. They weren't just back in action now. This wasn't crime-busting shenanigans. This was... fucking living, you know? Not like, extravagant living, but yeah. It pinched at Chloe's chest for a moment. This is what she had been wanting with for Rachel for a long time. Also, I, apparently this isn't obvious to some people either, that the relationship between Chloe and Rachel Chloe was in love with Rachel, but Rachel wasn't? Or people saying, like, Rachel was using her? I don't think so. I think they were just... She sees her Chloe as a friend only. Don't fall in love with a straight girl, right? That's pretty much how that happened. I, I think that's how I see it. This... Just this. Just... Being together on the road, eating out together, traveling together, plotting a course for a ship to build for two. The SS... Ugh, yeah, still need a name. Anyway... It just wasn't going all like Chloe had anticipated. Chloe felt like a dipshit when she realized she had been standing there, gawking at their much-needed meal. The barista, who had gone off to ring someone else up, returned with a slight wary expression. Trying to look less zoned out, Chloe began probing the content, checking the insides of the bag and their tray. Two drinks, two sandwiches, two donuts. Something seemed missing. Did we miss anything? The, bar the barista timidly wondered. No. Da, da, double check the receipt, right? Cause like, I don't know. A bit flustered, Chloe pulled out her crinkled receipt from her back pocket. Two drinks, two sandwiches, four donuts. But the bag only had two donuts. So Chloe must- Chloe wasn't crazy. Can I see the receipt? Chloe fished out the crinkled receipt and handed it over. Oh, duh do. When they placed the- when they placed the order, Max had been so far out of orbit, she hadn't picked her do donut flavor. Chloe reminisced back to the times in middle school when they and when she and Max would visit the local bakery. 
built into the grocery store down the street. They made some good stuff there, and for cheap. She and Max would take turns picking out the flavors of donuts and would get two of each, making each each other tr- making each other try the, uh, the other's choice. Not this time, apparently. Max was still out of it, so Chloe would have to step up to the donut choosing duty for both of them. Poor girl had made enough t- tough decisions for a while, huh? <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Chloe couldn't even crack a dumb joke over in her own head without feeling like an asshole. Yeah, I feel I feel bad too. It's not a time to be making jokes, Chloe. But anyway, Chloe had picked apple fritters for her own half. Could never go wrong. Oh, uh, sorry. I'll get those. What did you want? I I don't know what kind of donuts um Max would want. Maybe chocolate. Let's go with chocolate, because chocolate's always safe. Give me two of those chocolate-covered ones. The barista snatched them up with the weird waxy tissue sheets. Just the sound of that paper crinkling was making Chloe hungry for sugar. Chloe grinned like a schoolgirl at the candy store as she watched the donuts get pl- plucked into the bag. There you go. Beauty. Thanks. Uh-huh. When Chloe reached the table, she realized she hadn't come up with the usual witty quip or remark to mark her entrance. She just smiled a stupid smile and immediately dissolved at Max's downtrodden glance. Oh. Hey. Chloe set the tray down hastily. Uh. Oh god, great. Eager to undo what she perceived as sending Max's mood a centimeter further into the wrong direction. The girl needed some goddamn food. They both did. They hadn't eaten since the night before. Spending the night sleeping in the truck on the side of the road also hadn't done wonders for their stamina stats. Uh, food stuff for your face stuffs. <laughs> oh my god, Chloe. <laughs> when Max's eyes lit up a bit at the sight of the meal, it brought a reprieve clo- to Chloe's do- doubts. Blah, blah, blah. It brought up reprieve to Chloe's doubts. After immediately scarfing down a big bite of her breakfast sandwich between bites. Thanks. She was really going to town there. Chloe caught herself staring when her stomach growled uncomfortably. Stabbing back to her senses, she chowed down herself. The two ate in peace for a couple of minutes, occasionally swapping in glances. Oh, oh, here we go. Gay feelings. (laughs) Max was really devouring her sandwich, but she had yet to touch her coffee while Chloe danced between the two. The fuller Chloe's tummy became, the more queasy she got. It was the silence between them. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, the silence is starting to feel weird. There There would have been more than enough silence during their morning travels. Max's house was still a little ways off, but they'd be there by sundown. In either case, silence. It was unsettling. Chloe desperately brainstormed, uh, damn it! Or er, search for a topic of discussion. Coffee pla- cafe logo barista. Let's talk about the coffee flavor. You know this is not awkward. <laughs> so, uh, what uh, flavor of coffee did you order anyway? <laughs> oh no! Max took her first sip of the drink. Alright. So awkward. So that was just a little worrying. I got some raspberry stuff. Nice and sugary. Ought to keep me going for the rest of the ride. Oh, Max. Chloe's concern over Max's lack of memory gave a way of concern over whether or not Chloe could stay the hell awake for the rest of this godforsaken drive. So! Anyway. Was your sandwich good? How's the coffee? Chloe, you already asked that. <laughs> Max nodded complacency. She swallowed a gulp of coffee she had been on, sighed with some relief, and wiped her lips with her sleeve of Chloe's jacket, which was still which she was still wearing. Well, drink up, sister. Got a few more hours to go. Oh no. Oh no. Chloe light, lightly drummed her knuckle against the table to the jazzy beat of the music playing through the cafe speakers. Max took another sip, searched, scratched her nose, and sighed. Uh, Chloe? Yeah? We're going to my house, right? 
Uh, Chloe took a pause at Max's question. They already discussed this the day prior. They were going to coffee. They were going to the coffee fields. Max's parents didn't know that yet, but Max did. They had been. It had been Max's idea. Oh no! Do you think the time travel is really fucking with um, Max's head right now? I hope not. After taking a moment to recover from her stun, Chloe nodded s simply. That's the plan anyway. Right. Chloe rubbed her hands on her elbows a little. She was actually starting to get a bit cold without her coat. Max wasn't looking too great either. Fuck this, we're reaching out her hand, I don't care. Chloe paused, then extended her arm upright across the table, giving Max a sympathetic, look, worried look. Max looks high as fuck. Can I say her sprite right now looks high as fuck? <laughs> Max didn't seem to notice the gesture. Or maybe she wasn't taking what Chloe was given? Hey. Yeah? What's up with you, bud? Nothing, Chloe. I, uh... Oh no. Max's head jerked in an uncertain way as she swirled her remaining coffee in its cup. Sorry. The whole reality jumping thing. It kinda... I gotcha. With a soft chuckle, Chloe tried to empathize. My mind would be hella fucked up too if... Err... Uh, oh no, Chloe, no! <laughs> oh no, that's no... Fucking damn it, Chloe. <laughs> I mean, like... If, if, if I was... Nope, hella nope. Shut the fuck up now. Please, thanks, okay, bye. Chloe's stomach folded onto itself. Her still di digesting food causing discomfort. Max's expression turned a bit sour. Chloe knew that Max knew what she meant, but, like, she totally bombed right there. She had to come out wrong. Time had to unleash her desperation move. Crack a joke, plead with a smile, play it suave. Okay, the personality of Chloe is similar to mine. At this point in time, I'd probably make a dumb joke, but I, I feel like it's not appropriate because, you know, Max is all, like, fucked up. Should I do a joke anyway? Fuck this, I ain't gonna do the joke. Cause like, we could play it suave, but eh. Uh. <laughs> Chloe cleared her throat, sifted her side bangs with her nail, and gave Max a pleading, humorous lace smile. So, I know this this is a total dick move, but could you like, rewind and give me a second shot of not saying that? No, Chloe! <laughs> I didn't mean that kind of joke, oh my god, no. Max gawked for a moment, but then her expression curled into an undoing little smile. Oh god, yay! Okay, thank god, I thought I was gonna piss her off. Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, okay, thank goodness. It was the first time she had seen Max like that all day. Chloe? Max simply <laughs> said, Max said simply, brushing her fingertips against her cheekbone, like dusting off her cheek. Chloe had noticed over the past week that Max seemed to do this gesture a lot during, their, during conversation. Chloe guessed it was some kind of awkward, adorable tick when Max was nervous or didn't know what to say. After Chloe sighed through her nose, in spite of staring, she realized that Max had not followed up with any kind of verbal reply. The ever so brief pause of relief with a weak smile on her face was... No, it was not good enough. Fuck that. Max had been through... Well, Chloe didn't know what exactly or how much or how far, but sure seemed like a lot. Max just... Kept staring. Chloe's stomach felt light, even though it was full. Sorry. Smile stupidly. Stick out tongue. <laughs> oh, we could be totally cute. I want to smile, though. Chloe wasn't sure what to say. She was just caught up in Max's face. Max's eyes smi sparkled at hers. It was weird and amazing. Chloe could feel her cheeks getting warm. Her face twisted in a dumb smile. The moment was almost a as syru syrupy sweet as Chloe's drink. So cute. <laughs> But it passed too soon. <laughs> Look at the dumb, dumb smile Chloe has on her face. I love it. Chloe guzzled a gulp of her sugary caffeine-infused drink, hoping she recovered from a sec from her social flop. So much sugar and artificial shit, she could feel her bloodstream getting secondhand effects on her way down her throat. Max brushed sandwich crumbs on her pants as she stood up. Even though there were napkins right there, like literally right, right there, Chloe's chest swelled at a bit of pride. <laughs> Plus five lazy points. <laughs> Max got up, scooting in her chair and leaving it out. Another five 
Another plus five lazy points. Nice. How high could the score stack today? Max's eyes scanned for the restroom. BRB. Bathroom break. Chloe tossed out an alternate but appropriate solution to the acronym off of the top of her head. She grabbed a slight smirk from Max and was a centimeter further satisfied. As Max, br as Max brushed by, Chloe went to reach out for a hand, you know, giving Max an encouraging hand squeeze or good luck with the shitting, bud. You got this, girl. Believe in yourself. <laughs> oh my god. Eh, yeah, not so much. She started the gesture, though, to save the face she was waved like an idiot. Max curiously waved back. Chloe ever so briefly considered keeping her company, but eh, she had been over that sort of shit years ago. Chicks took pisses together, or pretended to piss, so that they could gossip, chat it up in private. Chloe had no use for that shit. She was pretty sure Cla she was pretty sure Max didn't either. If you wanted to talk with someone, you did it face to face, not while expelling crap <laughs> out of your ass. And who cared? And who cared if the other people heard what you said anyway? That is true. I never understood like when I was like in high school or like elementary school, like girls would go to the bathroom just to talk. I don't understand. Like what the fuck? Just talking bruising, goddammit. Chloe scratched her nails at her itchy scalp beneath her beanie, glancing across the coffee shop. Eh. Not so much to see in the way of bird watching here. A couple of solid six sixes in her books, maybe, but nothing worth committing a memory for later use, much less. Uh oh. Max's phone had gone off. It was sitting on the table. Well, hey, if Max hadn't taken her phone, she probably wasn't going to be, be in the bathroom for long, right? Chloe waited for the phone to buzz a second time, but it didn't. Thank fuck, she wouldn't have known to do. What if it had been Ma Mrs. Caulfield? Or some shit like that. Oh, right. Chloe had offered to take the call for them soon anyway. Uh-oh. Who is it? Well, to delay the phone call, definitely a text. Chloe was tempted to read it. She could just flip the phone over. Probably glean a bit from the lock screen. Hey, it could be important or something. Oh, no! Okay. In real life, I would not even attempt to look at the phone because you know it's a person's privacy but i'm trying to think of the mindset of chloe and max because they did just leave a town that got fucking destroyed i'm pretty sure people are still alive in arcadia bay maybe they're checking up on max and chloe to see if they're okay so we could check our phone but nobody is like calling chloe you know what i mean let's peek at max's phone this is probably a bad decision chloe couldn't help it she just flipped the phone over and looked at the notifications just in case, you know. From Victoria, I'll link you an article. It looks like- Ooh. From Stella. Haven't from him yet. I'm more- Dad. Max, call us when you get this. We need to know- Two chicks' names they were familiar-ish. Seems like they were texting Max about all the hell that had let loose recently. And Max's pops, Ryan, right? He seemed all worried and stuff. L they really need to call their folks soon, huh? Chloe's shoulders flinched as she heard someone walk by. She put the phone down quickly. Nope, not Max. Way too tall. Ugh, damn it. <laughs> With a sigh, Chloe slid the phone back to where it had been. Chloe's attention perked up like an excited puppy at the first sight of Max exiting the bathroom. But... Then Chloe noticed that Max had a clump of toilet paper wedged underneath her right nostril. It had some blood on it. Oh no! She's bleeding again! Chloe watched as Max dabbed her nose a bit as she approached the nearest trash bin and chuckled ch and chucked the bloody napkin in. A dark, devious dilemma entered Chloe's thoughts for in those seconds, waiting for Max to sit back down. What if it was all made up? No, seriously, what if Max wasn't a time travel at all? What if something had fucked her brain? You know, like, medically? It all have been five fucking years since they hung out, or even interacted. For all Chloe knew, Max could have been in, uh... Something could have happened. Something could have messed up with Cl Max's brain. Max cautiously took her seat, scooting back in. Scooting it back in. Minus five points. And avoided Chloe staring. What if the whole time travel was a bit... A bit... Maybe seeing Chloe for the first time in so long could have, like, triggered some crazy-ass trauma. The time, the time travel thing was how her fucked up head perceived shit. If Max's brain was so fucking- if Max's brain was fucking bleeding, she could have major issues. The- has anyone seen the movie The Butterfly Effect? Um, 
it, it's a little bit stupid, I can't lie. But um, it, it kind of relates to Life is Strange because um, the main character has powers to like time travel and shit and like changes up everything. But the more that the person does it, um, the, the, their nose starts bleeding and everything. And it's just like... Uh, I think uh, the first movie Ashton Kutcher was in it. And then he went to the hospital and he had like major trauma in his brain and whatever from after using the time travel shit. I think this is what's happening with Max. And it's kind of scary to think because like it's not like Max asked for these powers or she was like intentionally trying to like, you know, use them every second because, you know, I'm cool, time travel, whatever. She was just saving Chloe. And Chloe doesn't really understand like what is going on either, right? Because even when you play the game, she's like, prove it to me that you have time travel powers. And even though you do, Max is, I mean, Chloe's kind of like, you know, suspicious of her because um, she doesn't fully understand it. At least that's the way I take it. Chloe? You moron, don't fucking think crap like that. Max is fine. She saved your life. She has the power of a god. How you doing? I'm okay. She wouldn't lie, but or if I thought it was real, it wouldn't be lying, would it? Seriously, you can be chill. Max's tone gained a layer of awkwardness. Max sniffed, rubbing her fingertips against the dried nose, like it would somehow prove she was okay. How can I be chill? Anything I can do. Maybe you need medical attention? Okay, I'm not gonna, you know, be like, you need medical attention, because Max is clearly, like, very edgy right now, so I'm gonna say, is there anything I can do? Uh, can I, like, help you with with it somehow? I, I don't know, maybe get you some aspirin, or... Pretty sure that won't really help, but... Thanks. Max can totally rewind time, you dipshit. You tortured her for, like, three days, making her prove it. She could in how many different ways? She's a goddamn child of the Adam, for sure. Max sniffed and rubbed her sleeve against her nose a bit. Didn't look like the bleeding- didn't look like it was bleeding anymore. It gets better though, right? Usually. Max had uttered the word dubiously. So dubiously that made Chloe uncomfortable. Max took a, a few seconds, regaining her bearings. It looked- Chloe passed these seconds scarfing down more of her donut, desperately craving some- kind of sugary relief. Her head went to a stupid fucking direction of worrying. Worrying about making those family calls. Worrying about finding out all the people who were fucking dead now because of a freak tornado that somehow no one saw coming. Okay, if you guys listen to my uh, podcast, I did a Life is Strange spoiler cast with uh, Tail Plays Games and Lynn Esther, who are uh, two friends of mine, and um, we're the biggest like Life is Strange <laughs> fans ever, and we were discussing this in the final episode. Why didn't Max tell anybody in Arcadia Bay about the storm coming their way? You know what I mean? It made no sense to me. They could have at least like told somebody, even if they didn't believe them, you know what I mean? Like, there's a storm coming, and get the fuck out of the way or something so they wouldn't die. I never understood that. Worrying about how Rachel needed a funeral, how a freaking lot of people were going to need funerals. Fuck. Worrying about how Max Caulfield was getting to deal with the weight of this. Stuff. Worrying about how she was going to deal with it while helping poor Max at the same time. Chloe stepped out of her st stupor long enough to notice that Max had stopped. What? Max was just sitting there, eyes glazed over, p face pale, looking at her phone. Max? Chloe was mumbling, hoping she- the sinking feeling in her chest wasn't obvious on the outside of- as it was on the inside. You should eat, Max. Eat something. Uh, donuts. Eat one. For reals. Barely eaten, like, for, like, days, right? That twiggy ass of yours needs food, girl. <laughs> so come on, eat up. Oh, please. Please, Max. Everything, Chloe. Max was staring out of her trance-like state, but, like, she wasn't doing too well. Everything's fucking... Everything fucking dies. Oh, no. Uh... Well, yeah, Max sort of seemed like the cost of living, I guess? Fucking everything I touch. Max moaned under her breath, shoving her palms against her forehead. She pressed her hands against her skull, like trying to flatten a pizza of dust despair or the bunny her eyes went wide and their hands pushed across her head max g gasped at chloe's realization it took chloe a few seconds to, of recollection to figure it out when kate had uh taken a dive damn it chloe 
Oh no, don't say that! Max had taken it upon herself to adopt a girl's um, poor pet rabbit. Um, what else was fucked up about this as well? The, uh, in my playthrough, I didn't save Kate, and that made, made me really upset because I picked the wrong Bible verse. I wasn't paying close attention to like what I was picking. I thought I picked the right thing, but um, I fucked up, and that made me really upset. And in this game as well, she she committed suicide, so... Things had uh, escalated a bit with the whole serial killer, kidnapping, time travel, tornado mess. And now Max just had another thing to beat herself over up. As if there wasn't enough thrown off the table already. The girl was finding odds and ends, forgotten scraps, and throwing them off too. Oh, Max, don't cry! Oh no! Max tried to think of what to say. Not your rabbit, more- Okay, Chloe, no, we can't say not your rabbit or say more important things because she still feels bad, but saying not your rabbit is kind of a dick move. <laughs> Max, you were trying to save people from a fucking psycho. It's- Didn't even think to. Take the bunny with me. We were- We just- We're losing her, Doc. Oh man, okay, I don't want to talk about the tornado right now because she's really drunk. Let's talk about that bitch Jefferson. I hate that guy. There's a goddamn serial rapist kidnapping girls. And you, we, brought him down. I think that's more than makes up for a lost rabbit. If I'd been there for Kate in the first place, before I'd even gotten powers, her and her bunny would still be here. But I wasn't, so they're not, and... Uh, Max, slow down for a sec. You're hella freaking. A plant, Chloe. Oh no, Lisa? W what? I couldn't even save my fucking plant. Uh, your plant? Max was slipping. Her voice had dipped into an angry whisper. N nah. Oh no, Max. Chloe had to lean over the table just to hear her. I killed her, Chloe. I fucking killed a goddamn plant. I... Oh boy, she was flatlining. Max dug her fingernails into her scalp, shoving her swivered bang slick against her head. Chloe felt her heart freeze at a panic flickering in Max's eyes. Chloe just gasped, dumbstruck. Max usually, like, kept her kept to herself when she was freaking. Kept a chill head. All this shit happening lately really thrown this chick for a loop, huh? And Chloe had no clue what to do about it. She promised to be there, but just being there was clearly not enough here. Or maybe she wasn't being in the right there? Max quivered. Max's quivering hands finished, finished drying her eyes again. She flipped herself one up and nudged it past a barely eaten donut. Chloe was afraid to see what it was, but cl Max clearly needed someone to join her in whatever dark pit she was stuck in. So... On Max's phone was a news article about the tornado. The screen was scrolled to the section listing the names of unknown casualties. Chloe actually recognized a few. Shit. And there was one name there Chloe figured that set Max off. Warren Graham. Oh no, Warren's dead! Oh no, Warren is dead! Oh um, my- you know, I- I said that Warren- he's- he's adorable but he's annoying at the same time, but man, he doesn't deserve to die. That's kind of fucked up. Even though he was Sir friend zone the entire thing, but... Aw, oh, I feel kinda bad. Oh no. I wouldn't even be here if he hadn't... Max still muttering hysterics. Do I do... Let him die? Cause why wouldn't I just... Chloe couldn't bring herself to read any more of the article. She'd... Deal with that shit later. Max shouldn't have been dealing with it right, right then. Too bad Chloe didn't have rewind powers. She go back and take Max's phone from her, or saved her from fucking footballs and swimming pools. But when it actually mattered, oh, she's talking about Alyssa. Chloe sighed, rubbing a sweat from her forehead with one hand as she slid Max's phone back to the other. The girl was full on Mad Max mode now, with an extra capital M on the first word. God fucking damn it. Chloe, how about you stop thinking up dumbass remarks and do something? After a few seconds of gawking at Max's weeping, Chloe simply uttered the disconnect of disconcerting disconcerned syllable. Whoa. That like 
really sucks. No, Chloe, no! <laughs> Nailed it. I did this! Max's voice is cracking. The self-defeat was fucking real. Max? She wasn't going to take any more of seeing Max beat up herself. Stop doing this yourself. It's my fault too. You gotta move on. Okay. This is very difficult choice because it's just like, how do you convince someone who's been through so much trauma that everything is gonna be okay, you know what I mean? And Chloe is not the best with words, clearly, because she's making up jokes and stuff, so... Uh, we gotta move on. That's the, that's the only thing we can do right now. Dude, you gotta let this all this shit go. Stuff happen, with or without your powers. That's life. Dwelling on all that crap ain't gonna do you any good. The least I owe them is to... You don't owe anyone anything. Of course you don't get it. I'm trying to. Maybe if I wasn't such a screw-up, it'd be easier. Don't start this back up. Talk shit about yourself again? I will hit you. I swear to zombie Jesus. <laughs> Max choked in a surprise laugh at the blunt bluntness of Chloe's remark. Chloe gl glared up at- Chloe gl uh, glared at Max with a mock threat, leveling up with a slap right hand. Say what again? <laughs> Max eked out. It was weird like half sob, half laugh thing, but also kind of sigh, maybe? At least Chloe's stupid sense of humor had its uses. Here, eat. Ugh, Chloe said in a sharper than she meant to, actually. Like she had some right to be telling the Time Warrior what to do. Like the doctor's companions were allowed to call the shots. Hey, man. Hey, some do some of the doctor's companions were really good at that. Like Amy, because she's like my favorite, so. Um, okay. Well, maybe they were allowed to when the doctor was in a bad place like this. Yes, even River Song as well, or... Captain Jack, or Clara, I don't know. Chloe yunked on two chocolate and case donuts, passing them, passing one to Max. Chloe chatted down on hers, hoping her more sugar would bolster her endurance up to, for a turn or two. Max didn't seem to take keen on hers for some reason. She just sort of zoned out staring at it. After swallowing the first bite of her own, Chloe asked, What's up? Kate... She loved these chocolate ones. They were her- Oh no, we're triggering things! Oh fuck. Max? Dude, Max. It's like a donut. Ugh. Some- Sometimes a blue curtain is just a fucking blue curtain, Maxie. Just eat the donut, okay? I know, I can't help it. I'm not even sure why it made me think of her. Well, trust me, I know it sucks when random ass shit reminds you of stuff. But hey, come on now. It's just the donut. You look bush. Gotta get some energy in your butto. Right. The two ate their donuts quietly after that, but Max could tell that but Chloe could tell that Max was still bothered. God, poor girl. Max's face wrinkled as she scrambled up the to grab a napkin. She managed to grab it into a one time and seize into it fairly loudly. Uh, Max slightly relaxed her body and tightened back, tightened right back up. She was star staring at the napkin she had blown into. Chloe didn't need to see it to know what was happened because there were still some red st streaks across Max's upper lip. Fuck. After gaping at her own blood for a couple of seconds, Max sipped some more. She was careful to take in a deep breath and swallow. Ugh. That's not what you're supposed to do when you have a bloody nose. <laughs> she set her slightly bloody napkin onto the empty paper plate. Max? She was strained to- She was starting to think the visit to the hospital was going to be need- to be a thing soon. Max didn't pay any heed to Chloe, shakily fumbling a new napkin. She dabbed at her nose gently. She licked her thumb against the- Using the dampened digit to clean the blood from her lip. She dried her fingers and her face with the napkin. It looked like she wasn't actually bleeding. Okay, alright. Another bullet dodged. Don't say that either. Another bullet dodged, Chloe. Oh my god. It's okay. Max gave a hasty, subtle nod. She glanced to Chloe. Fucking finally, she had re repeated herself. It's okay. Chloe was a bit sack jawed at Max's weirdness. Uh, right. Chloe sipped on a quick sip of raspberry infused coffee. You ready to blow this? Hot? 
sickle joint? What? <laughs> oh no. Blow this joint, hot dog stand, popsicle stand, whatever. Make like a tree and get the hell on the road. Damn, Chloe had just made herself want to smoke a joint, big time. She remembered she probably has a little bit of an emergency stash hiding in the glove compartment. There's not- this is not the time to get blazed up, alright, Chloe? It's not 420. Uh, but she had quite to rely- but she had to quit relying on that crap if she was gonna help Max. Still, a backup was good to have around. At this rate, she probably needed it as soon as they touched down at the Caulfields. Uh, was Max still on the planet Earth, by the way? So... Max smiled nervously, trying to recover herself. Y yeah you're a dork. <laughs> and you... Saved me. Don't know how to flirt. Our god. We're flirting. We're not gonna remind her of because we need Max to be, you know. And you're the dork who is the goddamn cutest. Yay! So gay. I love it. Yeah, so cute. I can never pick up on a date. Even when I want to. Want to. Eh? When have you wanted to pick up a date? I think the best date I've ever been in was when we broke into Blackwell the other night. Oh yeah? Didn't realize breaking and entering was such a turn-on for a mild-mannered Max Caulfield. Pfft, hardly. It was kind of a thrill, though. Pretty lame, huh? Uh, you just need to get out some more. Stick with me, kid. I'll teach you the ways. Uh-huh. Well, daylight's burning, and crap. Let's hit the road, eh? Uh, sure. Chloe gets up from her chair. She gave her coffee a cup of swirl. Too much to let go to waste, but also too much to wolf down in one go. She had just taken it, as much as, as work as that was, and they had stand a pair of donuts to take for the road. They were apple fritters too, so they wouldn't get frosting or cream and shit any anywhere. Chloe checked the crinkly little bag they had. Two apple fritters, to still snug as a bug in paper rug. Come on, girl. We got a rubber to burn. Trails to blaze, baby. She made the head for the door, leaving all the trash behind. Still lingered her handprint marking territory on the glass door. Max had gotten up, but seemed to hesitate at the sight of their garbage. To Chloe's not really but kind of dismay, Max tidied up their garbage onto one plastic tray. Minus five lazy points. <laughs> she carried it into the garbage can to Chloe's side and dumped it out. Minus five lazy points. Back to square one. Uh, zero? Back to zero points? With a coffee and donut pinched together in one hand, the other dirtying the entrance door, Chloe pushed the way open for their exit. Max was still brooding, hands in her pockets and Chloe's pockets technically. Chloe had led the way to the truck, hoping the sprint of her step and junk food in her stomach would help compensate for all of these critical, critical fails they were rolling. Well, what the hell was that? Then Max fell. The sound of her body hitting the pavement, the gas came out before the groan. Chloe's heart skipped. Oh no, Max! Oh no, the music! Ah, it's gonna kill me. Chloe collided with the with the tarmac. The crinkly donut bag smacked onto the ground, and the seconds later, Chloe joined them. The straps of dangling from her shredded jeans slapped the the parking lot as she fell to her knees. Max was sprawled on her hip, barely holding herself from her palm. Chloe's reaction was first to check the fucking nose. No bleeding. Okay, okay. All right, cool. Well, not cool, but not as cool as Chloe. Max winced at her teeth grit. She sucked in air as Chloe grabbed her shoulders. Uh, curse, question, freak out. No, 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 we're gonna question her if she's okay. Max, Jesus, you okay? Um, you hurt? Chloe propped on Max against her for support, and Max huff, Max huff irritably, holding her hands up carefully. Max quivered palms were scraped up. It's hella pink, but not too bad. She was fine. Everything was fine. Everything was okay. If Chloe just kept on keeping on, it would all stay fine. Fan-fucking-tastic. Every goddamn thing that had been holding Chloe's life back was gone. So why did her so shoulders feel heavier than ever? Max hadn't exactly put on weight, so why did she feel so heavy? Everything was so fucking heavy. Oh, yeah, a little... I, um... Ow. Ah, oh, crap, your hands. Your hands, Max, damn it! What the fuck happened just now? What's going on? Chloe, Jesus, I I'm fine. Chloe's body felt weak with worry, a sensation that it was really weird to adjust to. 
Chloe let Max lean into her for a moment, neither of them quite understanding what was going on. Ugh, friggin' Max. The parking lot was cold and windy, and Chloe's bare, bare shoulders were stinging from the chill, but she had felt so warm somehow, so alive. Because Max is with you! Chloe suddenly realized that there were... That she was gripping Max. Max was not focused on her. Max wasn't moving. She was spaced out again. What was going on with her anyway? It was like something broke or... Max? Chloe was a little pissed at herself now for a few drops of fear had leaked through her squeaky worry. Max coughed and carefully set her trembling hands on the crook lap. Talk to me, Max. What the hell just happened? Chloe rubbed her hands against Maxine's shoulders. Max? Max had wobbled a bit. Chloe choked on a sob, trying to swallow it back down when Max's eyes finally regained focus. Chloe rubbed her eyes, considering what to say. Joke, touchy-feely, earnest. Um, let's be earnest in this moment. Be real with me, Max. You okay? Maxine nodded gently, warming her hands around Chloe's waist in an adorably careful way. Good, because I was scared. Chloe could feel her own teeth chattering a little, but she was so fucking warm, man. Chloe. Damn it, Maxine. Chloe chuckled softly. You're giving me more jump scares than lately, than, uh, than a Resident Evil game. <laughs> than a friggin' Resident Evil game. Like, with Max hacked up a cough, clearing up his throat. Like, liquors and dogs... Through, dogs through the window? You falling just now? So much more terrifying than me zombie dogs through the window. Oh. Max gawked at Chloe in this dumb but adorable way for a moment. Oh, they're so cute! But not as much as liquors? Uh, almost as much as liquors. Well, call it a tie. Still not as much as those really quick red assholes, though. Oh, I see. But Max's coughing came back. Chloe could hear an uncomfortable wheeze as she f fucking felt the grossness through Max's back pressed against her. Chloe didn't know what else to do other than pat Max's back, like burping a baby or... Shit. Max sighed after a coughing spell ended. She sniffed, wiping her nose. Chloe noted the lack of liquid. Not a nosebleed. So what happened? My legs, they just buckled on me. I... Buckled? Yeah, from something earlier? Sprain? Ankle or something back in Arcadia? No, I'm not sure what. <sighs> you okay? My hands. Max rotated her palms upward. They were scoffed and scraped from hitting the uh, tarmac. They're a little gnarly. But there's some gauze in the truck, no biggie. Chloe had always figured out the first aid kit Joyce had hand me down would have been used for. Well, something's more sinister than chirping in a parking lot. A little, uh... Chloe cleared her throat, shifting her position on the tarmac. Battle scars, bed. Flirt! We're gonna flirt! Price field! Flirt! Flirt! As romantic as this is, the truck's more comfy place for a throwdowns. Max smirked, rolling on her l lulling eyes and shaking her head slightly. Chloe savored the pink hue Max's cheeks were taking, smirking back. Yes! Price field! Sorry. <laughs> All the same, though. Chloe had ex expected Max to, like, try and get up. By now? Didn't want to rush it, but there was a dude making his way out of the shop, heading from his car. He gave the two a bit concerned look, but they didn't actually approach. It reminded Chloe of the time she had driven by a car collision a year or so back. Just drove by, wasn't her problem, didn't need to get involved. Kinda just like how they just driven right by all those wreckages back in the bay, huh? Oh no, don't say that! Oh my god, there's so much feels! The guy started up his car across the lot and headed off. Chloe? Max's arms were still slung across Chloe's hands, pressed on Chloe's skin. Into Chloe's skin. Chloe pulled her gaze away from from the passably and down her day's friend. Max leaned into the weight into Chloe's chest, aligning herself up more more upright. She winced a bit from her pain or another. Chloe hoped to fuck it, it was just a hand, hand scrape and move her hands up Chloe's bare shoulders. And she was ready to get up and move, huh? 
But Max paused there, just freaking stopped. Her scratched hand pressed into Chloe's bare shoulders, asking Chloe to bear both their weight. Chloe could feel little bits of gravel still stuck into Max's palm, digging into her own skin. Max's face was right there, right in front of Chloe's, hovering, lingering for a few seconds that they felt like small entities, poets babbling, babbled about. Please kiss. Are they gonna, are they gonna kiss? Max's eyes were a bit bloodshot, with bags hanging beneath, yet beneath their gaze surfaced burned sparks of determination. Her brows were tilt upward with fear and confusion. Her upper lip was caked with dry blood. Her arms wobbled, her eyes quivered, her fingers trembled. She was a hot fucking mess. And Chloe was freezing, her elbows shuddered a bit from the exposure to the chilly autumn wind. But everything was still warm. The freckles on Max's narrow cheeks plotted a roadmap to an undiscovered country. Chloe was so lost in Max's bewilderment expression that she didn't have time to react to Max's lip connecting with her own. Oh, oh, kiss. They kiss. Sorry. <laughs> this is like, this is like one of my favorite chips. So anything price filled, I'm really excited about. Her mouth is just puckered out instinctively, returning the kiss. Chloe could feel the warmth inside her wild out through her mouth. Max was so cold. Chloe let her eyelids slide closed, let Max's fragile form lean against her, let shivering fingertips slide up her neck. Then Chloe needed to come up for air. Their lips parted, then lingered, then decidedly separated. Chloe's eyes stayed closed for a second as her mind swirled through possibilities. She wasn't surprised by Max's gesture, but Chloe suddenly felt lightheaded. Silence Joe. <laughs> Let's be joking, because you know, that I feel like that's what Chloe would do. Avoiding Max's no doubt hella intense expression, Chloe slowly laid herself down, her back against the parking lot floor. Something blurry caught in her vision from the left, from the left, inches away from her cheek. On physical instinct, she twisted her head to see it. It was a crinkly paper bag with a broken apple fritter hanging halfway out. Max. Max choked out, clearly upset, confused. Poor kid had just made a move and wanted to like reassurance. Well, she was Maxine Caulfield. Of course she needed reassurance. The difference between Max and Chloe was that Max was brave enough to actually ask for it. Chloe was swimming in a poop-filled sewer of guilt and good intentions. It was, it was called her brain, infested with regret and made into rats. The air was so thick with a reeking scent of hopelessness that it stuck to your clothing. As Chloe stalled for a time, she simultaneously realized what a god-awful, stupid attempt at noir narration that had been. She kept chewing on her donut a bit more than she could chew for for sure. Wait, she's eating the donut right now? <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Max had yet taken the fritter Chloe was still offering. Instead, Max was feebly working her fingers around Chloe's hand. Stupid one-liner was pouring up the tip on the tip of Chloe's tongue, but it was too much for a goddamn donut in the way. Max's grip got tighter and Chloe managed to swallow the apple shit down as she quickly quick as she could. She dropped the donut bag in Max's lap. She pushed and Max pulled, and Chloe was upright. The, Max's face was flickering with apology, but also with hope. Chloe had to wring out an extra second or two of tension. Come on, she had to. Max was too goddamn adorable. Chloe squeezed Max's bruised hand, then finally delivered a long-awaited zinger. You're holding my hand, Chuck, you sly dog. Max's worried expression warped into the edges of perplexion. Chloe leaned in, nudged Max towards the, into a hug. She planted her lips against Max's shoulder, against the cigarette stench uh, surface on her own jacket. Chuck. Poor kid was so lost, huh? It was pretty adorable. Chloe's lips formed a kiss against Max's shoulder, again, kind of out of instinct. The light scratches of her nails against Max's neck, tilting the head against her girl's shoulders. Peppermint Patty. Jesus, Max. Only like Americans cartooning pioneer by curious chick. Okay, okay, this is like I know it's so random, but this is my opinion and what I think of Max. I don't think I know the game is forcing Max to be like a bisexual because you can like get in a relationship with Chloe or get in a relationship with Warren. But every time I see Max, like the way she acts in the game, I feel like she is lesbian. She's not bisexual. At least that's how I see it. I don't know, man. I would have figured a mild man or Max Caulfield would know the Charlie Brown reference. Uh, didn't know what to say. It seemed like sh she just kept holding Chloe's hand. 
Chloe realized that maybe the drug had been too forced rather than bail. She elaborated off the cuff. I mean, shit. Chloe continues to tease. You're a natural good. You and Chuck are birds of feather. So... Max rolled right on by Chloe's reference. Damn it, she was lobbing softballs here, and they were still sailing over Max's head. Um, are we... Okay, you didn't really... Oh, this is so awkward. Well, come on, Max. I wasn't gonna be cliche and say, like, been waiting for you to do that. <laughs> of course not. Max chuckled softly. Too predictable for you. Hells, yeah, too predictable. I'm chaotic good. Get used to it, girl. Oh, chaotic good now, huh? That's news to me. Yeah, huh? Fighting crime, solving mysteries, getting all these side quests done while the pro tag... That's you. Takes care of the main quest line. Bidness. Chloe, I... Max trailed up with a sigh. Hell, Max, I'm dropping a fucking ton of marbles in the hungry hippo table, and you're not even hitting the damn liver thing. As if coming to some kind of realization of her own, Max eased off of Chloe, off of her. No! She wobbled onto her feet, clutching the donut bag between her index and thumb finger. Chloe whipped the fitted crumbs from her lips with a twist, let her butter sh shudder from the wind and chill, and sniffed a bit of slime forming at the edge of her nostril. She remained silent, waiting for Max to say whatever she was going to say. I shouldn't have done that. No, you should have. You should have kissed Chloe. Kissing Chloe is always okay. Kissed you, I mean. Dude, Max. Chloe grunted, dusting off her ass as she got up. Just because I said you're like Charlie Brown doesn't mean like you have to go all wishy-washy on me. I mean, I was just teasing, joking. Don't. This isn't a joke, Chloe. Uh-oh. I made a mistake. I'm falling in love with you and this... Oh no! <gasps> oh no! In the game, Max never actually said that she was like in, like you know, like in love, in love with her. So this is kind of like holy shit. Max wrinkled her nose, pointing to the hand, pointing a hand to the spilled coffee at their feet. This wasn't how I. Chloe let her infilled inf skull sink a little, latching her thumbs onto the ends of her pocket. Whoa, Max. Chloe's heart was pounding at, at a ribcage. The L word had come out. A dangerous word. Because whenever that word came out, like, for really real, was spoken out loud and crap, it always led somewhere disappointing. Somewhere that hurt a lot. Oh, okay, yeah, I understand. I understand what Destiny Smasher, who is the creator of this fanfiction, I understand what your interpretation of this, because, like, Chloe... Um, is very s sensitive, I guess, in a way, and uh, pertaining back to Rachel because she fell in love with Rachel, and then she said she loved her, but Rachel never loved her like that. She just loved her as a friend, so I can understand why Chloe's all like, uh, Max, what are you doing? You know what I mean? And I think this goes for anybody, like, it doesn't matter, like, even especially if it's your best friend saying that they love you, it's just kind of like weird, you know what I mean? Having wasted her precious moments to formulate a reply, downplay, joke, Downplay. Not not joking. Downplay. I, uh, we're- we kiss, so what? Just a kiss, that's- oh no, I made a mistake. That's all it- Fuck! <laughs> Chloe shut her trap right there. That had come out hell wrong. Max's brows furred with offense, like she had been insulted, which she had. I- I mean, we- we grew up together, right? Chloe saved face. Or tried to. We've always, like, flirted joke and shit. We've kissed once or twice before. I- I didn't think it- Oh no, you're ruining it! Chloe, stop! Keep digging that hole deeper! Chloe, I- Max bit her lip, eyes sunken, tears forming. I- I thought I made it pretty fucking obvious the lighthouse when I- Chloe knew, she noticed, and as usual, she stalled. She forced Max to figure it out on the cliff, in front of the tornado, just the day prior. In all fairness, Chloe did more than just stare, share it of taunting, goading, prodding, teasing the truth of Max over the past week. Part of her wants something familiar, something she held once dear, something she once trusted, because everything else had disappeared. It was easier to rebuild something that was broken than start all over again and build something brand new. 
because her relationships were like friggin' furniture now? If Chloe was being honest with herself, brutally honest, no half sees, she needed some someone to fall back onto in case Rachel never showed up. She couldn't just be alone again. Uh and Rachel never showed up. Oh no, Max is crying, don't! What the fuck? <laughs> so here she was, watching this girl her heart was tripping up over, watching this girl brush angrily confused tears from her eyes. Kinda like Chloe o had over Rachel more than a few times. One hand that couldn't go let go of Rachel Amber, on the other couldn't let go of Maxine Caulfield. Chloe had just the thought of with figuring sh that this shit out, dealing with it, she get more time. There wasn't a punchline there. Chloe wanted there to be a punchline, but all there were, were thorns. People are dead, Chloe. Max went brought out of frustration, sounding with a sudden look of panic. I had to make a choice, and Max suddenly, like, stormed off t for the truck. Oh no! Max! Chloe sighed tired, watching Max walk after the driver's seat of the truck. She impatiently tried into pursuit, scratching an itch beneath her beanie. <sighs> Fucking head. It was itchy as hell. Chloe needed a bath. Max must have been so mentally loopy she'd forgotten she was driving shotgun, cause the girl had stomped off into the driver's seat. Max paused there, hand on the door ha handle, before her expression soured into spite herself. Max's eyes flashed before dangerously at Chloe, then rounded the truck. Chloe stood by the driver's door for a moment, her head getting hot with frustration, with regret. She knew what was coming. A huff from Max. Her lips pressed with aggravation, Chloe fi fished the keys from her pocket. Having skin-tight jeans was annoying, well, only when you needed to get shit out of your pocket. That is true. That is true. Chloe awkwardly fumbled her keys, opening the clunk of the door in a rush, tearing off her hat and clawing at her itchy scalp with her other hand. Chloe opened the truck door, stuffed her hat behind the seat, and sat herself in with a sharp, bitter sigh. She really fucked up again. If you went with a chaotic build, weren't you supposed to be avoiding constantly shitty plays? She was bound to land a critical hit sooner or later, right? Chloe would just say, you know, focus on, on getting her and Max straight to the Caulfields? Damn it, forgot to unlock the other door. The fuckers were knocking each other down like dominoes now. Oh, this is so awkward. After letting Max in, Chloe realized that they had still needed a bit of breather before they hit the road again. Hey. What? Chloe sighed, pushed her blue hair out of her face and turned to Max and waited for long enough to, for Max to speak, just in case. Max stared back at her expression. Somewhere else. Maxine. Max, never Maxine. Oh, what? Ugh, nothing. No, never mind. Does it bug you? It bugs you when I use your full name, or... No, not when you say it, I guess, but... Just... Never mind. Alright, sorry. Chloe had to double back for a second. The hell was that about? Chloe had called her Maxine odds of oodles of time, freaking tons of times when they were kids. Now all of a sudden it was offensive? It was because of the. when she traveled back in time, and Victoria. she was friends with Victoria and she called her Maxine, so. Like, sure, Max got into all that trigger warning culture bullshit now and, and again, but for real, this just made no sense. Whatever, moving on. Max turned to try striking the conversation back up because Chloe was sucking money monkey turds. At the lighthouse, when the storm was passing, that's when I realized it. Chloe nodded in compliance, eager to hear this out. I mean, I feel so dumb now. I should have seen it coming. I, uh, I couldn't give you up. A bit speechless, Chloe let Max rent for a spell. I didn't ask for this, I didn't want this, but jumping through time, experiencing and re-experiencing the same, but different, but different things. It it all started with you. Chloe, you were what... I, I couldn't just... I couldn't have saved you without this fucking rewind power and the, the more I... 
Max sniffed a bit. Oh. The more I messed up with time, the more I- we discovered how fucked up our creative was getting. By the end of it, it just hit me like a brick. Having you back in my life, that was a gift. That was the power behind fucking Super Max. And that is my theory for how Max got her powers. If you guys haven't seen my theory video on, um, what I think, how Max got her powers and stuff, you can check it out over here. But, um, that's, that's essentially what I think. Max got her powers because of Chloe. Max groaned, wiping her tears from her eyes. Chloe couldn't take her eyes off of Max, spilling all this out. Alternate t time, alternate different realities, different ways you could get hurt. Ways you could have hurt others, ways people I love could die. I just, I wanted to stop all of it. M maybe that's why the tour to Max coughed up under her sleeve, trailing off. Damn. Max. Chloe realized Max was getting up so weepy that it was turning into a problem. Which was, you know, adorbs, but you said you're do you're done rewinding time, right? Max nodded hastily, eagerly. Well, Chloe pressed the tips of two fingers against her own tear ducts, cleaning them out. Then, the past is staying in the past, so let's f stop fucking with it. Leave it alone, you know? Max nodded again in the same way. Uh, what? On the cliff, Chloe- Chloe, I was going to kiss you. Yeah, I know. But I didn't. Like, I feel like almost I did, like I was supposed to, or... Why didn't you? Max shrugged widely. And the way that you said don't fucking ask me because I got no damn clue and I should have done it. I didn't. Max fished for an explanation. I thought maybe... Chloe didn't need Max to finish. She got the picture. I thought maybe you were gonna kiss me. I understand where Max is coming from because, you know, you, like, sp essentially proved your love to someone. You expect someone to kiss you, but, like, from Chloe's perspective, I feel like it's not an appropriate time to do that because everybody's fucking dying in front of you, you know what I mean? So. What not with the whole, I just sacrificed the entire town to keep you, to keep you in my life, but. Getting warm? It's okay. Chloe tried to assure it's still stand stalling. Max, what I said just now, out there, I uber borked that. Not the parking lots don't have their charm, but... You're right, first kiss between two awesome ladies, like us, is there more than... It was... M more romantic than, a uh, elementary school dare. Max eked out a small, pathetic laugh came as Max wiped her eyes some more. Max Caulfield... Did you just sass me? Did you just make a joke? Bravo, we're getting somewhere. Chloe chuckled a little, realizing that after that night they spent together, they had been totally childish ways of squeezing some form of truth from Max. She hadn't expected Max to take a the bait, though. Come on, Max was supposed to be the grown-up after all. So, what you're saying is... Bad at kissing, double dare. <laughs> double dare, kiss again, do it. I've got to start double daring you more often? <laughs> More like the other way around. Oh, yeah. Yay! Ah! I love it. I'm so happy. Now there was a bit of that old spark again. But this whole new spark that hadn't existed back then. Chloe, this is... This is super sudden for me. I didn't... I wasn't planning on... Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh-oh. Look, it's like this, Max. Chloe breathed in, exhaled, and rubbed her, her her cold shoulders. At the lighthouse, shit got real. Fucking real. And I, like, realized how much... And there it was again. That tr troubling L word hanging on the tip of Chloe's tongue. No kisses, no doubts, no coffee to cover it up. Chloe wrinkled her hands back and forth between herself and Max. She tried rolling up for a 20 this time. How much you love me, Max, how much I love you, I, I get that now. Um, uh, more like 17 or 16, but good enough, Chloe finished her turn. Destiny, luck, whatever, I don't care. You're awesome, we're awesome, but... Chloe sifted her nails through her dirty hair. 
I know I said that I that shit about realities and but the fact is and I see it now it's uber crazy you have all these memories with me all this time you have spent together it's all there in your head but only some of that is in mine yeah that's another thing that I was trying to explain before is because like when people expected, you know, like, Chloe and Max to, like, get married after, like, the sacrifice Arcadia Bay ending, it's, like, their their memories of each other are different because, in, in a way, Max has spent more time with Chloe than Chloe spent time with Max. So Max has developed more feelings for Chloe because she's seen Chloe longer, you know what I mean? She's been in so many, like, different um, situations with Chloe, and then when she rewinds, Chloe doesn't remember it, just Max does. So it's just, like... You can't expect Chloe to be like, marry me, Max, because we've been through all this shit, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not fair to her. That's that's how I see it, too. But only some of that's in mine. Max is finally leveling out, and Chloe was getting this off her chest. Some of those moments, those memories, some of those aren't really ours. They're yours. Like, there are, there are hours for you, but whatever you've been through, and you don't need to explain any more of it, Fuck, please don't, my head can't take any more of this right now, and neither can yours. This past week, what I told you about making me laugh and smile, that was real too. For both of us. For me. Damn it now. Damn it. Now Chloe was starting to cry. How much blood and tears and coffee would these two teenagers chicks spill for each other within the premise of a coffee shop on a boring afternoon? Tune in to find out. Max's hand reached out and grabbed Chloe's. Her poor fingers were still trembling. God damn it, they still hadn't cleaned up Max's hands because Chloe kept stalling. Uh, let's get those hands taken care of while you're wasting time listening to my dumbass. Chloe decided to pop open the glove compartment in a hurry. Chloe really leaning over, hoping her arms would block the, that carton of cigarettes from Max's sight. And also the pair of condoms. And also half smoke joint. Oh my god, Chloe. <laughs> First aid kit. Boom. Chloe wasn't a cleric or whatever other shit classes had healy bits, but you know how hard it could be, right? Max helped to figure out which way was the disinfectant and how to apply it, and then get a gauze wrapped around it. And, well, it was totally overkill for some scraped skin, but fuck it. Max deserved whatever was going to help right then. Plus, going through this first aid motion gave both of them the time to focus on a couple of minutes. Beside each other's awkward faces anyway, Max sighed with some relief, twisting her hands on their wrists and a little as she got to feel for the bandage. She looked like she had been in a street fight or something. <laughs> More like she was she fought with a street and the street won. Am I right? Ah, <laughs> uh, bad Chloe. Thanks. Um. Let's be earnest right now. Yeah. I got you covered, Max. Looking out for you. Good. Because I need it lately. You mean you need me, right? Uh, Ovs. For sure. Hella. <laughs> oh, Max, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Starting to wonder if you use that word more than I do, Caulfield. Uh, maybe. Then... Things settled back into awkward land. Um, you were... Right. Uh, yeah, I... Whew. Going for it. Seriously? Kiss! 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 Ah! Chloe took a deep breath, feeling her stomach lurch. Since when was Chloe Price nervous about freaking kissing? Since she actually gave a damn about this girl, that's when. Chloe went in for a kiss on the old smackaroonies. Huh? <gasps> But Max not sure away for love outside. No! Oh god. Whoops, bad timing. Chloe, we can't just What about What? Max's expression went dire. Chloe knew what she was what was on the tip of both of their tongues. But Max had the courage to say it out loud. Rachel. It's always Rachel. Max was whispering into the dark tone. Fuck, Chloe, this this is ex this is exactly why I said I shouldn't... In this moment that Chloe had finally accepted the fact that the shit was all a little fucked up. The two of them were finally feeling guilty about someone who was, wasn't around anymore. Someone who had lied to Chloe, played her like a freaking fiddle. 
Maybe Rachel had meant to. Maybe she hadn't, but it happened all the same. In my opinion, I don't think Rachel meant to hurt Chloe, like, intentionally, you know what I mean? Rachel had been planning on just, just leaving with Frank, leaving Chloe behind, and... Shit. <sighs> Rachel hadn't meant to hurt Chloe. It wasn't like she wanted to hurt Chloe. And she sure as hell didn't deserve what happened. Had Chloe maybe been in denial the whole time, stalling, clinging onto someone who didn't feel the same way, only to bring them down? And she had done it over again with, with Max, here with Max, practically twisting Max's heart into caring about her back. Rachel didn't deserve what happened. Neither, neither did Max. Max didn't even ask for this shit. Chloe had grabbed her, pulled her in, used her powers. And now Max Caulfield was falling in love with her? After how selfish she had been? And Chloe was falling for her too. For those dorky vibes and the way that she was leaning in and sticking up for herself. Filling that old void while filling in a fresh one at the same time. But were they actually falling for each other or just falling for... Anything that was in loneliness. I hope not. I like to think that they are for each other. <laughs> Nothing was okay. Nothing was fine. Shit was hella fucked up. That didn't mean that they shouldn't bury themselves in it, though. Rachel had indirectly brought them together. And, like, Rachel would have wanted them to be happy, right? I feel like the cruddiest person, Chloe. Was grumbling, but... Max was grumbling, but at least she wasn't crying again. Maybe she cried her eyes dry now? I could have saved them, but... Instead, I made such a selfish... Hey, no, what did I say about that shit? What? Chloe grinned, slanting her brows with a mischief. mischief. I dare ya, I double dare ya, motherfucker. What? Say what one more goddamn time? <laughs> Chloe, you weird little... Max snickered through her wispy breath. Uh, that was... I, I don't know what I was trying to double reference there. The Pulp Fiction bit, plus back to the daring you kiss me thing from the other day. Uh-huh. Max shook her head lightly, opting a, sc a scoop up with Chloe's hands. Max pressed herself against Chloe's side for a moment, both of their hearts thumping against each other's ribs. Chloe had kind of been hoping for another kiss, actually. Was that fucked up? Chloe could really use more kissing out right about then. Chloe felt Max's back expand against her chest, sniffing- Max sniffed, sighing out a sh- Side out shakenly, cuddling her head against Chloe's neck. Nah, Max didn't need a kiss at the moment, huh? What she needed was just Chloe being there. The right there this time. Maybe it was enough. I'm so fucking sorry, Max. You didn't ask for all this crap. You deserve better than... I don't deserve shit. Well, I'll, as it turns out, I'm pretty shit. But you're stuck with me. Chloe... Another timid, confused laugh. Everything is so screwed right now, but... Well, we're on the same page there, Max. All I know is that I need you, Chloe. I got good news for you then, Max. I mean, it was when I said I was always going to be with you. Forever, right? Chloe knew that Max was calling back to their moments on the cliff. Yep. And that was before the, the prospect of a hot makeout session. <laughs> Max puffed up a muse before through her nose. So, I mean, now it's basically a shoe-in. Chloe dropped her hugs tightness a couple of notches, but Max held on another minute or so. Chloe just noticed that their breathing started to sync up. You're amazing, Maxine. Should happen, but it's done now. Maybe we deserve to feel horrible. Maybe we deserve to feel horrible over it. I don't know. But we're in this together. Chloe gave Max's body a gentle shake. She kissed the top of Max's head. She wrapped her hands across Max's arms. Mushy stuff ain't on what I'm good at, but for you, I'll try anything once. Aw, that's so sweet! Remember that later when we're both in your bed. <laughs> a gross! Max giggled, wriggling herself out of Chloe's grip playfully. You're gross. To the Max, Max! Chloe ruffled Max's hair as they shuff shuffled into a position, getting ready to hit the road. Hey, you still hungry? You got a donut waiting for you. Actually, yeah. About the hunger, huh? Have that effect on people. By the way, apple fritter, huh? Can never go wrong. Hmm, takes me back. Yep. 
We're ready to go? Sure, but we still should call our parents. In this saying, Max dragged an extremely brief moment to go back to a serious place. Uh, I did offer to do that, didn't I? You did. Well, Chloe retrieved her phone, then gawked at it fretfully. Um, I'm gonna get us back on the road. We're late enough as it is. Chloe handed her the phone to Max. Call your folks up, put them on speaker for me, and we'll fill them in, okay? Well, fill them in enough anyway. Sure. So, like... This is gonna be hella awkward, huh? Not as awkward as kissing our on our asses in the middle of a parking lot. <laughs> that is so cute, I love it. Shut up in your fruit fucking further, Max. Before you can live, a part of you has to die. Well, there you go. That was chapter two of All Wounds. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, there's a lot of feels happening here. Uh, I'm really excited for when ch chapter three comes out. I don't know when that will happen, but hopefully soon. And if you're curious and you want to play the game yourself, you can get it in the links in the description. You want to get Life is Strange, there's in the description as well. Or you want to watch my Let's Play, you can click on the screen right now and watch that. Anyway... I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I can't wait for the next chapter to come out because it's getting so gay and I love it. Um, but it's also, it's also bringing back like all the life strange feels that I had for the game because this game is very precious to me. So reliving the moments of like episode 5 and all that shit happening is just like, oh my god, no. But yeah, so please remember to leave a like and share this video and to subscribe because it really does help me out a lot and lets me know that you guys like enjoying my content and want me to put out more stuff. See you in the next video. Bye everybody!